What's up, everybody? What's up, Corey? Go. You're first. Burnt toast. What's up, burnt toast? My favorite. I'm telling you, at least a once a stream. I have to say, what's up, burnt toast? Or good day, burnt toast. Or goodbye, burnt toast. What's up, Liz? What's up, Coffee Nomad? Glad to see you guys back. Enjoying some pizza? That sounds delicious. Give it one more minute, let the people trickle in, and we'll get the show on the road, my people. So I definitely had Taco Bell for dinner, and it was, uh, I tried that new toasted I don't know what it was, toasted or cheesy tostada or something like that. It was actually really good. No complaints there either. What's up, Anon75? Yeah, they take a minute to pick up. Cheesy toasted chalupa? Yummy. Good morning, India. Sweet Earth Pizza. Is that something you buy in the store? <laughs> Donuts and Imperial? Hell yeah. It's my kind of night. What's up? Bunny's in here. What's up, Bunny? You're procrastinating the 15 hour video? Don't procrastinate. You saw my whole speech on procrastination. If you didn't, I'll say it to you here. Procrastination is like masturbation. It feels good when you're doing it. But in the end, you're really just fucking yourself, right? So don't procrastinate. What's my password? You trying to social engineer me? What's up, Udit? What's up, JJ13? What's up, Granny's on Zanny? What's up, everybody? Sound words, they are, they are uh, words of advice. <laughs> Procrastination equals mental masturbation. It's a good way of putting it. What's up, M girl? Thank you, Scorched. Appreciate it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this show on the road. So, tonight, week five, welcome back. Uh, welcome back me, I'm the one who's been uh, delaying these, so it feels like forever. So, week five, we are back. Uh, and let's talk about the, the outline really quick. And thank you, uh, S-E-H, I don't know how to say your name. Thank you for the sub, appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, quick announcements, maybe five, ten minutes, do a little catch up. Then we'll have our class, and then we'll do some Q&A. And I've got some fun things tonight. Actually, I actually think the class part of it is going to be pretty laid back. Uh, there were 20-something challenges, and I don't think that we're going to end up doing all of them. Well, I know we're not going to end up doing all of them, because some of them did not feel realistic to me. Uh, so we're going to focus today. We'll talk about what we're going to focus on here in a minute. But uh, So... I foresee this class ending on 1016. So two weeks from now will probably be the last class. Now, what is coming next? Um, if you've been following along with me during the, you know, lunchtime streams we've been doing, we are planning on doing a uh, Python for pen tester stream. I'm thinking lunch format. So 
uh, Python over lunch kind of deal. And we are going to be doing, um, so we'll start out, and I haven't figured the whole thing out. It'll take me a little bit to lesson plan, but we'll probably start out with something like, uh, you know, a subscription to Code Academy, which is free for a week. We'll run through that. Maybe all the challenges for Python 3. We'll get a nice introduction to it. And then we'll start doing like uh, Black Hat Python or, or Violent Python and run through those books. And those books are both written in Python 2, but we'll spend time converting them into Python 3. So it'll kind of be like a day by day. We'll talk about, you know, a lesson at a time and we'll just take it in little baby chunks. So uh, you could take your lunch with me and we can we can learn something new together. Uh, so that's what I'm foreseeing is next. I'm also thinking of some series uh, up for YouTube, but uh, still running with with what we've got going. Uh, so uh, other announcements. I am speaking at three conferences in the upcoming future. So uh, besides RDU, I'll be speaking at on 1018. Wild West, I'll be speaking at on 1025. And besides Charleston will be 119. So if you are in the area, you want to come see me. And if you want a sticker, I got some stickers. Uh, come see me, I'll give you a sticker. So somebody asked the lunchtime. So my lunchtime is 12 Eastern. Probably going to be 12 Eastern for, for me. I know that that affects some of you, but you guys can either watch it on VOD or, or uh, however you need to. Uh, not going to B-Sides DC, and I've heard that B-Sides DC tickets are hard to come across. But uh, So tonight we'll be doing a giveaway as well. Uh, I've got some of these mice. You've seen them before. Uh, these Vixing mice that Vixing is sponsoring a little giveaway for us. So uh, I'll show it again later on during the stream, but we'll... We'll do a giveaway, and if you want to participate, it just goes off your points. Um, basically, if you've been here for a while, you come consistently, you watch, that gets you points. Obviously, being a follower gets you points, sub points, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, we'll talk about everything uh, at a later time when we get to it. But we'll need names, addresses, and emails. That's their requirement in order to send it out. So if, you, if you're interested, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But all right, so going back to the screen, uh, Patreon, it is the beginning of the month. Patreon people, thank you, thank you, as always. Uh, James D, $25 and up club, thank you. Uh, $15 and up club, Kermit, Hugo, Will, Ricardo, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you not only to you guys, but to all the patrons out there. You guys really, really do help go a long way for for some of these things. Um, hopefully you've noticed the the content, the quality, everything is getting better, um, you know, and I'm trying to improve on every every new stream I'm trying to improve. Uh, you can see the backdrop behind me is different. That's because I'm trying to improve. Um, you know, I'm qu camera quality, audio quality is getting better. So we're just hopefully working towards, you know, a better overall uh method for this and thank you thank you scorch thank you sasquatch thanks both of you for the the subs i appreciate it guys so other than that let's quickly talk about what we'll learn and uh take a look at the commands down below if you guys are curious but there's there's several commands down below if you guys have any questions faq uh but so what are we going to learn? Today's mostly going to be about SQL injection. We're going to do a refresher since it's been a few weeks. I'm going to run through the original slides we've had. Um, and then we're going to do, we'll talk a little sensitive data exposure, a little bit of the random challenges. I've run a couple of different pen test methodologies that I would typically run against uh, this, especially with SQL injection. I'll show you guys what it looks like. And it's very interesting to see what manual injection looks like versus something like a SQL map or something like Burp Suite because you're going to see that there's uh, quite a bit of difference. So uh, on top of that, my thoughts for tonight. I think that tonight's going to be a quick stream. I don't believe it's going to take us very long to get through, maybe 40 minutes to an hour. Uh, so because of the shortness of the material and... Honestly, this is the, the hard challenges have the most challenges 
but I was kind of disappointed in the sense that a lot of them felt unrealistic. And even through some of the ones that we're going to go through, they're just kind of like for fun challenges. Um, but really, it's like, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But I, I, I picked and, and chose the ones that I thought were good. Even the cross-site scripting ones didn't feel natural. So I actually ended up taking those out today because... Um, you know, I just, I didn't like the way that they were coming through. So hopefully some of the ones later on, uh, but I think the SQL injection material that they provided is really good. Well, so we'll do a refresher on that and on to the bug bounty. So my thought is because this is so short tonight, I've picked out a bug bounty. I have no idea about it at all. I figured we can do some enumeration on it together. You can kind of look at my methodology, how I might attack it blind. And that way you can see some of this bug bounty pen test methodology. Uh, and I don't promise to be as good as some of the big names like Stoke or, or Namsec, uh, but I will show you some of my methodology and some of where I pick up tips even, uh, so you guys can, can kind of gauge that as well. But um, so with that all being said, Let's talk about SQL injection. So these slides should look very, very familiar to you. Uh, so what is SQL injection? Again, SQL injection is an attack where we can inject malicious SQL statements. So it's easy to avoid, but still happens often. And if we're successful, we can read sensitive data, extract information, etc. I'm reading through these fast because this is a refresher. Uh, and sorry, my dogs are barking in the background. They bark at any little noise. So if you recall, we have some common SQL verbs. Uh, you've seen select, enter, delete. Um, we didn't ever cover update. We haven't covered drop. Um, but union is what we're going to be covering tonight. So union, just pointing this out, is what combines data in multiple queries. So we'll use a union verb to combine multiple queries together. You'll see what that looks like and why it's important. Okay, so other common terms, again, where and or not, order by, uh, it's very, almost some of these are kind of logic based, right? So even when you come into, did I skip the special characters? I did. So special characters as well. Um, when you come into special characters, we've got the string delimiters, which you should be familiar with. You've got comment delimiters, wild cards. Uh, ending SQL statements, right, with the semicolon, and then a lot of programmatic logic. So equals, greater than, less than, etc. cetera. Uh, when we talk about the kind of example of a user's table, here's a user's table where I put together, again, you know, I'm always obsessed with Marvel stuff. Um, so if we do a select star, which is a wildcard from users, this table here, we're selecting everything. But if we just select username or user ID and username from users, then we're only going to take these first two columns. Okay, come through here. What if we select everything from users where the country is Russia? Then we're only going to pull out Natasha here, right? We'll pull out the Black Widow. And then if we did select everything from users where the country is US, okay, so we narrow it down to these four. And the username equals Frank. There's only one Frank username from the US, so we'll pull out this user ID here. No Boris, no Boris, sorry. So uh, this is a quick rundown. Hopefully, if this isn't familiar to you, if I went too fast, then you're probably on a later episode than you need to be. I would go back to the SQL injection episode that we did. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to dive into our material. I'm actually not going to be in Kali Linux today, except for when we are uh, doing bug bounties. So this will all be Windows based tonight. So I am on our juice shop here. I'm just logged in to juice shop. If you are not logged into juice shop, then go ahead and get logged in. Though I don't believe, actually this first one does require us to be logged in. Um, so the first challenge we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of go in order a little bit. Um, the challenge says to order the Christmas special offer of 2014. And let's open up our burp suite. I'm going to bring this over here. OK, 
Okay, so I've got Burp Suite. I've already got the target set up and picked out. I've done some things in here, but don't worry about this. I will be in pro tonight, but everything that I do um, is, is going to be available in the regular version as well. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is the first the first challenge, which let's go ahead and actually turn on our proxy. And we'll turn our intercept on here. And then I'm just going to do a search and say test. I'm going to hit enter and that shouldn't do anything except intercept a proxy, which it's for that and for that. I actually need to search it one more time. Let's see if that works. OK, and I'm going to send this to repeater. So what you're not seeing here, if we send this, you're seeing that there's a bunch of OK, we just sent a queue search of nothing. Uh, and that's fine. So what you're seeing here is just a bunch of gibberish in JSON format. Now, there is one thing that I do have that you won't have because this is an extension to Burp Suite Pro. If you do have Burp Suite Pro, the JSON beautifier is a nice feature because it takes this junk here and it just turns it into pretty. So uh, I like pretty here. So anyway, what we did was we searched on this parameter of Q. And with Q, if we search nothing, it brings back everything. So what we need to look for and look at here is a little bit of injection. And now we've done some injection already in previous episodes. And injection can be as simple as just putting in something like that, a single quote, sending it, and seeing what happens, right? And nothing really happens here. So that's OK. We can also target. Um, so if we target here on test, you can see we send it, pulls back, and then we send, send again. And that's still successful. So what if we close off the command? Aha. So either way, you do it on both. I've had it saved. But if you do it here, and we actually close off our statement, you can see we get a SQL error. So what's happening here? Well, you see that the syntax just threw an error for us. So if we look down, now if we were to view this, if we were to actually inject this on the browser itself, um, wouldn't be as, as pretty. Uh, you would probably just see an error message. But here, we're actually seeing a full error message. And you can see when it comes through, it's saying select star, so we know what star is, from products, where, and then it's doing a little search here, OK? Uh, the search is putting in this. Uh, this semicolon and it's trying to search for the semicolon. So it's killing the statement. Oh, what's happening is we have a syntax error too, because if you look at the statement and we're closing it off, which you see we're closing it off here and then we're ending it, but we're missing something. If we read through the statement again, you could see that we're actually missing a couple of these guys. So you see the parentheses? If we were to put the parentheses in here and see what happens, you can see now there's a success. So we have the success. And if you're looking at it like this, I'm sorry, it sucks. Uh, but this is kind of what you're looking looking for to get back. I'm going to do it on the JSON beautifier just so you guys can have a clear picture. So what we're supposed to be looking for is a product from 2014, meaning that it no longer exists. Um, so we've successfully completed this SQL injection. And why this is important, if you go back, so we're looking for deleted at being null in the original statement. So when we search the tables in this statement, deleted at was null, meaning that it would not return anything back that was actually deleted. So deleted at null means this is actually still a product in the shop. If we scroll through, scroll down a bit, and just hit something that has actually been around, which you see item ID 10 
has been around and then deleted in 2014, then you realize that uh, this is what they're talking about. This is the special thing or special item from Christmas of 2014. So it got deleted right after Christmas. Now, what they want you to do is actually order this. So let's turn off the intercept. And if we go back, we can actually just process this. We can add this to our cart here. And if we do, let's do an intercept again and see what happens. So let's add this to our cart. Let's look at the request for the cart. And just says rest basket null forward. Okay, nothing special there. If we go to our target and let's look at the API because the API is what's actually sending this and we're doing basket items here. So one of the basket items is sending over quantity one. Um, let's make sure on something here. Let's actually do is it F12. Let's do F12 and look at the storage and see what our BID is, our basket ID, if it'll tell us. And I'm not seeing it. Let's check out our basket. And let's refresh this as well. Let me turn off the proxy here. Let's see if we get our basket ID. I'm not seeing it. That's all right. So with burp, we had one that's in here that said five. I don't know if it's actually five. Um, we can, oh, cause you know what? Nothing actually got added to the basket. Let's go back to the home page and let's do a add to basket here and see if that actually functions. Let's go to our basket. That could be part of what the issue is. So this isn't actually functioning. Let's uh let's refresh this page completely. A little glitchy. Let's try adding that and seeing now if it picked up and it didn't. Uh, we're logged in as anonymous. Let me see if that's why too. I wonder if the program reset. Yep. Got to make a new user. So this resets every so often. So if you need to make a user, make one as well. Bob's your uncle. Okay, now we're logged in. See if we can add any product. There's the BID of five. Okay, so we still have a BID of five. Let's add it. Now it's saying it's added to the basket. Okay, so we've added it to our basket. And if we come in here, we still, you see the one from earlier where there's an add of five. Yours should look something like this with the API as well. Uh, so if we run this in repeater, and you were to say something like send that over, quantity one. Uh, this token expired. Let's see if we can intercept another request to this. Let's go back. Turn the proxy on. Intercept. Add that. Okay, and we might need to steal our cookie information, which is fine. Um, but let's let's send this to repeater as well. And forward that, forward. Here's the API. We'll send that to repeater as well, just to have it. API again, quantity two is coming through. I'm just gonna forward through all this. And if we come back into the target, you can see there's basket items of seven. So if we look at this request, we just need to copy the authorization and switch it over. So I'm just going to copy this stuff that we just sent. And we'll modify it just a little bit with the token. Actually, where's our other one? Let's see if we can't add this to the cart.
Now we're still getting a validation error. We can copy this on the product then and just switch it to the basket item. So instead of doing basket item as seven, we just do the basket item here in product quantity. And you can see we got a success. So if we look at our basket, it's probably crazy at the moment. So we've got two. Uh, that actually makes sense. We added two in. And then, so we have our basket ID of five. We got the quantity. Now it wants us to add in the item ID, which was 10. And if we refresh, let's see if this actually worked. It did not. Let's see what the notification was. It's giving us success, but it's not working because we're not in quotations. Or maybe don't need to be. All right, let's see if it works. If not, it's not super important. Honestly, it's not super important. Okay, we'll, we'll skip that. What's more important here actually is the SQL injection itself. Uh, so if we come back into the SQL injection, there's something that's super important. Actually, let me just, we'll do it in BERT. So if we, let's close out of these. And okay, so we've got this statement here and we're able to dump all these, all, all this data, right? And let's say that we wanted to, uh, we wanted to take this further and we wanted to do a union statement. So let's do a union statement here. And in this union statement, we want to add in a select all from, and ideally we want to dump something that's critical, right? Um, we can do a test table. We could do something like one, two, three, and just end it with a comment, something like that, and send it over. Um, we can see it's not supported. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this whole statement here. And then I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come into the parameters. And then I'm just going to paste it here. And watch what happens. So we go to raw, you see that it's now adding the percent twenties for you. It's just a quicker way to do percent twenties, um, you know, spaces encoded. So we send this over now. You see that we get a SQL error of one, two, three. There's a syntax error. Um, okay, so maybe my, I don't need, let's see, maybe I don't need this. Let's take out, uh, let's take out one, two, three. Let's make it like X. Okay. So I didn't like the numbers, but like, look, look at this. You see there says no, no table X, no such table X. Okay. That's a different error than we were getting. We were getting a syntax error before. Um, and the nice thing is we're not blind here, right? We get to see what we're putting in. So you see that we're doing a wild card here, doing a union select from, and then we're closing it off here, right? With a comment. So the rest of this is just negated. Um, so we go back to X and it says, okay, there's no, uh, there's no, you know, there's no table X here, but a common table, if we're after something juicy would be users and see that it changed again. So the selects to left and right of union do not have the same number result of columns. Okay, what does this mean? This means when we do a we do a statement like this, we have to have uh, we have to dump out the right number of columns for this to actually work. Uh, so what that means is when we're doing a union select, we need to do like a union select, and then we need to do something like union select one. Uh, union select two, union select three. So here's what that would look like if you control A, control C. So say we want to select just one. Okay, and we'll say, okay, let's select one column here. Hit enter, come back, send it. Still gonna get this error. So the pain in the ass kind of thing to do is we have to do a comma, 
do two, do a comma, do three. Keep going through it until we find the right number. Now I won't make you guys suffer on that and I'll actually paste this in the chat if it'll let me. Uh, that is the correct method there. So if you see, we're gonna do eight and then when we do actual eight columns, then it dumps. So up until this point, you have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, all we're dumping at this point are the eight columns. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got it? Uh, at this point, we could start kind of guessing what some of these columns might be. And instead of, um, you know, instead of using one, two, we might do something like username or email or password. Uh, so first thing we can do too is because this is searching a wildcard here in the front, it's dumping everything for us and we really don't need that. So we can just like type in something random here and just dump out a blank form. So now it's doing a statement and it's grabbing one, two, three, four. So what we can do is say for like ID two, instead of saying two, we could say ID or column two. You can see now it starts to dump out a lot of different things. Uh, it's dumping out the ID under name four, five here. Okay, so even though it says name, don't worry about that. What we're worried about is what comes out in this right here. Okay, on top of that, um, what's another one that we can guess? We can guess something like username. Username is very common, so let's say username. Send that over. Okay, not a lot of usernames. B. Kimenich, that's who wrote this. Uh, scroll through. Worst brought. <laughs> um, so a couple usernames, but we can keep going with this. So we got usernames, and we could do email. See if email works. Send that over. Email works. So really, you just have to continuously kind of guess at these. Uh, and then, of course, we'll try password and see if that does anything. And then you see it solved the user credential challenge. So out came the passwords in their um, hashed format or encrypted format. So this is part of the bigger challenge. The, look at this statement here. Let me see if I can drag this across. So we're just building upon this. Let's just show how we built upon it. So again, you know, we realized, okay, we found users. It said, hey, you don't have the right amount of columns. Then you come in here and you say, okay, well, let's try column one. Imagine we did one through seven, didn't work. Tried eight, finally eight worked. Okay, we had this long status here because it was using the wildcard in the query. And we just got rid of that. And then from there, we started just poking in different things and seeing if they worked and they all worked for us. So the query in the end looks something like this. Now I wanted to show you guys a couple tools that I actually use doing real world testing. Um, one is SQL map. And here's SQL map. All I do with SQL map is I copy, I would take something like this and I would copy this request down. And I would just say copy to file. That's all I did. Copy to file, saved it as request.txt. I do SQL map. I do a dash R for request. So here's my request file. And then I did a level of five, risk of three. Those are the highest level slash risk that you can run. That means we're going as in depth as possible. So you see right away, it decides that Q might not be injectable, but it's gonna continue to try. It comes through all of these different things. And then it realizes, okay, Q is SQLite. And it has a blind based injection, potentially. So do we want to test payload specific, uh, skip the testing for other databases? Yeah, it's fine. So I did that. 
Keep going through, and then it says, false positive or unexploitable injection point detected. Q does not seem to be injectable. So as we just saw, that is a lie. Uh, another thing I want to point out is I also scanned this with Burp Sweep. And I use the active scanner, view the details on it. You can see no critical issues showed up. Um, and we had interesting input handling of SQLite injection. So in these requests, it realized that there was some sort of injection potentially happening because it saw the input it was doing here was coming through and being injected here. But even Burp Suite could not figure out the exact statement or you know how to get through this. So this is another spiel on uh, uh, not relying solely on your tools. You should rely on you know your intuition and your skill set as well. If you only rely on your tools, you're going to run into some issues. So, and I missed some things go down. Um, Body ROTX, thank you, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. Blizz, thank you for the donation. I appreciate that as well. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so that is, that's the real heavy hitter when it comes to the SQL injection for tonight. Some of the statements are going to get absolutely ridiculous as it goes on in the next two weeks. But, you know, if you're struggling with this, some people have been putting in some, you know, items in the chat and how to do some of the things I do and tips and tricks. Uh, absolutely fine, acceptable. Go check those out. You know, the more people that you can learn from, the better. Uh, so that's a really, really good one. The other one that they had in here that was a SQL challenge was to look at a review. So if you just open up, and I'm going to open up a different review. So let's view this egg fruit juice. So you see we reviewed the egg fruit juice. Um, and if we go into, let's bring this back up. We go into our target and we go down into the rest portion you will see that there are products and I think this is the one I just opened. So we'll send this to repeater, make sure this one works. Okay, so we got a success message here. Um, so if we were to change this parameter here, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on it, uh, but if we were to change this parameter to sleep and say we do sleep for one, now this is, one millisecond, I believe is how it works. You see it's really fast. Sleep here, sleep here, and I have a space. No, I don't have a space, it's just how it looks. Okay, sleep's getting a little longer. And then sleepy, sleepy times, right? This should only be going for one second. I don't know what the issue is as to why it's taking so long, uh, but there, and you see that the, the sleep came through for a solve here as well. Um, so something to note about sleep and why, why the sleep command is important. And it's a little bit different for every different type of SQL. So, uh, depending on what you're working with will change the command, but the concept or process behind it is identical. So we use sleep and you, you might even come across this in an interview question. Uh, we use this when we are up against something like blind SQL injection. Blind meaning we have no result at all. So if I were to just put in like, say, instead of the sleep command, I had, you know, just a single quote in here. Um, I would have no idea if it was actually injecting or not because there wasn't something that responded back and said, hey, that causes SQL error. Well, if you were to throw a sleep command in there and you were able to figure out the injection blind, you can throw a sleep command in there and then realize, hey, this just slept for a second, or this just slept for 10 seconds. And I'm, I, you know, based on the delay, you understand that there's injection there, and then you start manually kind of prodding it like you do here. And it could take a long time to build out a SQL statement that uh, is really valuable. But this sleep command is kind of what kicks that off and what kind of verifies that, yeah, I think I do have SQL injection here, uh, even when you're in a situation up against blind and you really can't tell. So that's, that's why I chose to include this and, and kind of stress its importance. 
So those are the, the heavy hitters tonight of SQL injection. Um, we will talk a tiny bit about some of the other challenges just so we can solve them. Uh, so let's take a look at, uh, first of all, there is a challenge that says to gain access to any log file on the server. Now, if you want to do this and you want to do it quick, my suggestion is to run Durbuster or run, um, you know, run Derb or GoBuster or whatever it is that your heart desires. Uh, but all you have to do is run a word list against this and support and logs will come through. So I'm not going to show you how to run Durbuster. I think we did it in the first episode. So Durbuster against this or your favorite tool of choice will bring you to this log page and that will help solve this challenge. Uh, so on top of this, a lot of the rest of the challenges um, they deal with, uh, they're calling it roll your own security. But if you remember being in the FTP section of the site, there were a bunch of files here. Uh, so a bunch of these challenges are going to be similar, identical, and this is information that might be used later on in challenges. Um, but we've got some files here. So, uh, the first one is to access a, um, a developer's forgotten backup file. And that would be the package.json.back. Now, if we were to try to download this, it says, hey, only, um, only MD, or, or which are markdown files or PDF files are available. So let's go ahead and just go back on this guy. So what's another option? Um, so if we do this and we try to download, you see that this is causing issues. Uh, one option that is common, okay, we can just say .md and there's no such file. Okay, what about, so if you guys aren't familiar with the, the poison null byte, you could do a percent zero zero and try to enter that in. Okay, that doesn't work. Uh, we see this a lot, the, the poison null byte, you see it a lot with like um, PHP and older versions of PHP. We use this to kind of bypass some things or even other, other versions, uh, I think older Apache as well. But um, so here you see that this poison null byte doesn't work, but the lesson here is uh, not to forget about your encoding. So if you actually add a 25 in front, which a percent 25 correlates to a percent in, in encoding, then look what happens. This starts to download. So instead of downloading it, let's actually just come over here to Burp Suite. And we will go to the proxy and we'll intercept this guy. And then what we can do is we can see the response. If we go to right click repeater and you just say send, and let's see, it's not picking up. It should pick up. Let's forward that. Interesting. Not modified. Let's, um, let's try one other thing. I think I know what's going on. Let's intercept the OG and try it again. Okay, let's repeat this, see if that works. There you go. We're good. We're good. Okay, so you can see that it shows the file for us here. And so there were a lot of challenges that were based on um, this process here tonight. And for me, it, you know, like, okay, so a lot of it went off of these dependencies and they wanted you to review these dependencies or look up the different types of um, packages that they had running in here. And that is, it's not wrong. It's absolutely right. I just think for for what we're doing, this would be a little bit of overkill. 
Uh, one of these packages, there's a couple of vulnerable packages in here. One of them is vulnerability to uh, cross-site scripting, which is something that was pointed out in one of the other challenges. Um, so going through this information and looking at this data is, is definitely important. This falls under really the uh, enumeration portion of anything, right? And if you're doing web app or you're doing bug bounty or anything along those lines, it really comes down to enumeration. If you're looking just on the surface, you're going to get left behind because the people that are actually getting the, you know, the good bugs and all finding you're in the top 20 or whatever, they're the ones that are digging around and digging way deeper than most people are looking. Uh, so these are things that absolutely they would look at. Now, for the course, I, it's, it's just not something that I, I think we need to dig too deep into. So if you want to unlock several challenges um, in this aspect, you absolutely can go back in anything here that's not a that's not an MD5 or M, sorry MD file. Um, you can go ahead and grab it. So the coupons one is one that'll do it. The um, suspicious YAML file here is a sim file, so that's one. And they have the Easter egg as well. So if you guys want to play with the Easter egg, since we're in here, we can do that really quick. And then we'll probably call it call it and we'll just go and do our own little thing. So let's intercept on this proxy. And we'll do Easter egg. Send this guy to repeater. And then we'll do a percent. 2500.md. And you can see that here, this is an Easter egg at all. It's just boring, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what does this look like, chat? What is this? And what gives it away? Base 64. Base 64. And the equal equals gives it away. Good job. So we can right click on this and say send to decoder. And we can just decode as base 64. All right, what's this mumble jumble stuff? Any guesses, any ideas? You can't see it. Yeah, it's a little small. I don't know if there's a way for me to make Burp Suite bigger. It is a URL path. I think you're right there. Ah, somebody said it. It's ROT13. So an indicator sometimes of ROT13 is uh, is this double, like double letters can be an indicator of ROT13. So you could say, um, you could say also ROT13 stands for rotate 13. So you're literally just rotating this half of the alphabet forward or backwards. Um, let me go ahead and turn my intercept off, which I was already in there spazzing. Okay, so let's drop that. And then we'll go ahead and do a uh, ROT13 decoder which probably, I'm surprised CyberChef doesn't come right up. We we'll put in here, rot 13, you see the devs are so funny, they hid an Easter egg within the Easter egg. Yeah, this is technically a cipher, that is correct. It is a cipher. Don't know why I said technically. Okay, then you come into here and now we get space. So here's your other Easter egg. So they've hit some stuff in here and this is really stuff like it is what it is. It's not really going to, I don't know, teach us anything. It's just more of capture the flag type stuff. Um, but you know, I think it's fun to, to at least acknowledge the Easter eggs that they put in there. Um, so that's really it. Like I, I don't think there, so you're more than welcome to go and check out some of the other challenges that existed. I'm gonna come back for a minute. You're, you're more than welcome to check out some of the other challenges that existed. I did not think, in my opinion, that they were realistic 
or that they were, you know, worth teaching. So, uh, and a lot of them, like five of them were identical with the whole MD5. Uh, I, I think too that, you know, even the cross-site scripting, like I said, guys, it, it was similar to a repeat lesson. And on top of that, I don't think the path that got there was super realistic. So I, I ended up skipping it. Uh, but you're more than welcome to go read the challenges, read up on it if you're interested, you're trying to get that 100% completion rate or anything. So, um, but I, I definitely took the topics that I thought were of use and what you would see. But the big lesson tonight is don't, again, we talked about this in, in episode one or two, don't trust your tools. Like Burp Suite is a fantastic tool. I mean, it's, if, if I had to purchase one tool and only one tool, it's Burp Suite. But at the same time, you saw in the beginning when we scanned the app, how many vulnerabilities it found, not a ton. And here it didn't find really SQL injection. It did better than actually SQL map did, which is good. Uh, but we still didn't get, you know, we didn't get what we wanted. We didn't get the statement given for us. And that is, you know, that's part of it. So, um, we have to do manual legwork a lot of the time, especially if you're doing web app, especially if you're doing bug bounties, even more so. Don't trust verify, yeah. Burp Suite is free. A lot of the stuff you're seeing is free. Everything that I did tonight outside of the JSON beautifier was free. So, um, I try to keep everything free because I understand that you guys aren't, you know, you're not all paying for this or have a pro version. So um, I saw a sub come in as well. Sorry, California909. Thank you, thank you for the sub. I really do appreciate that. You guys are awesome tonight. Um, so I want to do a giveaway that'll take about 10 minutes. We'll chit, chit chat, shoot the shit for a second. And then from there, we'll go ahead and we'll, um, we will do some bug bounty hunting. We'll see what we can find. So... Uh, again, we are we are going to be giving away this mouse, this mouse here, Vixing. Uh, they are sponsoring this stream by giving away some mice. So thank you, thank you. It's got the side grip. It's got a little scrolly wheel. It's very comfortable, honestly. Like I'm not saying that because they're sponsoring it. I'm not getting paid for this. Um, they're just giving out some mice for us. So super comfortable, super nice. I'm clicking it. It's really not that loud. Like. You know, if you if I click my mouse, my gaming mouse, super loud. Um, you know, and also it's not like it doesn't come with a battery. It's a it's a chargeable. So and the charge lasts, you know, it lasts half a year for one charge. So it's really nice. Um, so basically, if you're if you're newer here, this is open to everybody. I wasn't told any limitations. I was told I was told I need a name, address, and email. Name, address, and email. So basically, if you enter this and you're picked as a winner, add me as a friend on, on Twitch, send me a message with your name, address, and email, and Vixing is going to send this over. So the way we run here is we run on a point system. If you guys have never been here before, I'll bring over this point system. Uh, so you can see currency over here. Actually, I like this background. I might just keep the stars for the rest of the night. But if I sort by currency, we've got currency. Uh, there's different ways to earn currency. Most of the ways is just by being here. You can see like the, the people who've been here quite a long time or, you know, they get the most points. Um, so it's just attendance really helps for these sorts of things. Uh, again, the 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 subs help, the the follows help being just being a, a there's there's double or extra points just for being here a certain amount of time as well. So. Um, what we're going to do, I think, actually, I'm going to bring this back over, is we're going to do, where's the giveaway tab? We're going to do a giveaway. Uh, this is for the last one we ran, but we'll do a raffle, and um, I will I will do a max of 200 tickets and a, a ticket cost of 200 points, so some of you uh, should be able to enter. And then we'll do, uh, the command is, Hashtag or hashtag is a bang raffle. So let's open up the giveaway. We'll open it up for five minutes. And what should happen is 
you type exclamation raffle and then the number of tickets you want to buy. The number of tickets. You have to purchase the tickets. <laughs> there you go, raffle one. So actually, guys, I'm going to I'm going to reset this. Let me reset this. Let me open the giveaway now. Sorry, guys, go ahead and, and re-enter because I had other people's uh, raffle information in there from before. So apologies. So we'll let this run for five minutes. We're giving away five of these. So five of these guys. And I'll come back on screen. Maybe. Uh, why is my IRL off? Let's see, let's see. I don't even have, I don't even have a monitor in here. What the fuck happened to that? All right, I'm not gonna worry about it. Do I have my live screen? Is that gonna work? Hey, that works. Dude, Granny's on Zanny. You really wanna mouse that bad, man? Definitely don't spend all your points. I think J Delta just wants something, right, J Delta? Like you've been in here gaming the system for God knows how long, never won a thing. How do you say your name? Sesfair? Sesfair. What's up, Freddy? You know, these these raffles are going to go to somebody who purchased one ticket. One whole ticket. Who won the pineapple? Um. It was a guy, uh, just it was a gentleman off of off of Twitter. If you want to know who won, you can go look in the thread. I, I don't really want to say names, but it's it's out there. It's public as in as terms of who won it. We still got two and a half minutes. And J Delta is loading up. And you guys who haven't been here before, J Delta's strategy is to buy as many tickets as possible and he never wins. So. How do you enter the raffle? Like everybody else is entering. You do the bang raffle and then the number of tickets you want to purchase. Tickets are 200 points. So somebody do the math, 55, 56 times 200. Uh, one, my mom's been dead for 11 years, and two, I can see myself in the, in the screen, so. But thanks, man. How do you get points? You you got to be here. You got to be here. Attendance gets you points. Do I ever play games on stream? Overwatch. I've got my Overwatch wig. I'm ready for it, guys. I'm ready for it. Man, 195 points. You got to like stall this out just a little bit longer. Honestly, I think 195 points, if you hit follow, you don't have to sub, you don't have to give me anything. If you just hit follow, I think you get 200 points. I'm pretty sure. And you have 53 seconds to do that, so. It's not, it's not a bang follow. It's not how this works. We did hack net on stream once. 
That was a uh, enjoyable experience, if you ask me. Yeah, I don't know why you didn't get points. Where's my currency? My currency's on. I can't edit. I think I can't edit because we're in the giveaway. All right. We are going to pick a winner. Pick a winner. <laughs> J Delta, you won something. Bro, you won something. You only rigged the election, so it's fine. Congratulations. So obviously you know how to get a hold of me. Send me your uh send me your address, please. Pretty please. Alright, winner number two. <laughs> Granny's on Zannies. You also know how to get a hold of me. Pick uh shoot me your address, your email, and your name. All right. Number three, number three. Burnt Toast. What's up, Burnt Toast? Send me your name, your email, and your address, please, sir. All right, two more. The Real Root Beer. Please send me your contact information. And we'll do one last one. I could play We Are the Champions. My AO Cat, congratulations. All you gotta do is say it's rigged and then you win. You entered a raffle, you didn't know what you won? <laughs> you guys have won a fantastic mouse. How do you not know what you won? You guys are hilarious. It charges itself. You don't even need, you don't need batteries. All right, send me your, send me your addies, please. Send me a friend request, send me your addies. I will get you over the goods. Ah, your home address. I like it. All right. Let's do some more hacking, shall we? So let's get into... Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's open up Kali. I'm going to open up Firefox. And I swear I had it open. Maybe I don't. Oh, I do. So, program of choice tonight. It's going to be Tumblr. Why Tumblr? It was the first one. So, again, I am attacking against... I am attacking against a program that is in a public bug bounty... That is fair game. If you come into four hackers, you go into program directory. It was literally the first one when I went there earlier. Let's see if it's still the first one. It is. It's got 69 reports. Nice. So if we click on this. And I've got the Discord overlay off, you guys. You crazies. So anyway, 
if you go over this, it comes with the the rules of engagement. Uh, talks about testing. It's got their own SSRF server if you're going to do server side request forgery. Um, it's got some rules in here. So we're not going to get into any kind of um, hacking. We are going to, and you see they're a safe harbor program as well, so they're not going to initiate a lawsuit against a researcher in response to reporting a vulnerability if it fully complies with the policy. So don't search another party. Third party may take legal action, blah, blah, blah. Please submit a report before engaging. Conduct may be consistent. Okay, again, we're not going to be attacking them by any means. We're going to do enumeration. We're going to look at some items, see what we can find, and uh, go from there. Now, they've got the different payout ranges. They've got what their out of scope slash no bounties are. So, uh, you know, most of these are kudos, pat on the back. You don't get anything for it. So, and you can see that a lot of this stuff, this is really, if you didn't see me on Ben's stream uh, a couple weeks ago, this is really what pen testers look for and bug bounty hunters don't have to look for. Like things like missing cookie flags is something that we will ding you on on a report, but a, a bug bounty hunter is not gonna get any money for this. This isn't what they're after. Honestly, they're always after the, the criticals, right? But I mean, they're looking for other things that you know will pay money because they want the reward more than anything else. Uh, when we're actually looking at these sorts of things, we're looking at everything you see here. So a little bit of difference between pen tests versus kind of bug bounty type stuff. So the really nice thing too about this is you see that it's got the wildcard.tumblr.com and they wildcard a lot of stuff. So this is really nice as well. Um, even APIs involved, so that's really good. Um, what we can do is we can start just kind of enumerating this and go from there. So, and shout out, so I'm gonna try some new things tonight, um, but we're gonna go ahead and we'll start with sublister. So we'll just sublister on this domain. So sublister, we'll do a domain and then we'll just do tumblr.com and see what comes back at yeah, tumblr.com. Do I ever tune it to stop? Uh, no, I don't. I I tune my burp suite to only intercept proxied traffic or, or in scope traffic. So. Okay, so this is gonna take a minute to run. So I saw an interesting methodology and I'll show you some of my methodologies as well uh, on Twitter. So if we go to Twitter and look at that, Bunny's giving away some stickers. These stickers are uh, the coolest fucking thing, by the way. I wish my stickers were this cool. So whoever did his design, fantastic. Uh, don't know if he's still here, but super fantastic stuff. Um, so on, on top of this, what I like to do is, and let me bring this back. Like I like to search for, uh, say something like sub lister like this. So, and this is always dangerous cause you never know what's going to show up in your Twitter feed. Um, but you see here like sub lister. And then if you scroll down, occasionally you run into like, you know, you run into different items where people have made suggestions. Let's take a look at the latest. There was one that was going around. This one was really good. So this is one that I'm talking about, like where people get their suggestions. Um, you see here sublister, they sublister the domain. They do an end map against the domain. They do a mass scan against the domain. Um, this is not my methodology, but this is a methodology. I, so yes, this is, this is not active scanning yet. We are, if you, if you see what we're doing, we're just looking through different, uh, search engines or other areas for information. 
So this would be considered a passive scan. They've got a, a JSON file, nice. They got a scope file down here, that's cool. So um, we're still gonna let this go through, but what I was saying about the about this stuff is you can find good methodology just by searching Twitter. Twitter is such a valuable resource, right? Super valuable resource. So um, things like this are nice. You can kind of look through it and just see like here's a um, here's somebody saying you know here's an alternative to Sublister. So here you go. You you just find a new a new tool here. So um, different methodologies, different different types of things. I really like looking through Twitter for these kinds of things. So this will still take a minute. Uh, I mean, we can like go out to Tumblr and see if there's anything else. We could also um, CRT.sh, if I can type in here. And we can wildcard the domain on Tumblr. Let's see if that pulls anything. Perhaps. Okay. So you can see we get a lot of stuff that came back. Look at all this junk. And the dates that um, associated with or logged at. So you know that these are pretty active. Um, so one method is to look through this. We can copy all the data out if we want to and grep out these, um, you know, these different identities here. Uh, we could start looking at anything that might be interesting. Honestly, like some of the, the more interesting stuff, well, obviously the API might be interesting. Um, any sort of login areas or any sort of dev, if you could find dev anywhere or test or anything along those lines, I don't see a dev test. Um, if they have like OA or uh, Active Directory, which that's not even not even showing up. Um, embed, I don't think embed's gonna be anything. We can check it. And our list just came back, which is good. Request denied. Shoot. All right. So we've got a long list here. Look at all this stuff. I should have put this to a file. Mistakes have been made. Mother of God. My question is, do people get, I wonder if Tumblr's little, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that people get a dot tumblr.com is what they, uh, is what they get. So I don't know if this would even be the best because I think that when you register, you get the, the, uh, tumblr.com. Well, good thing, first of all, that they stopped, stopped servicing porn. Uh, because if we were to use something like eyewitness against this, it could be really bad. Uh, but I think like app one API would be interesting. Um, yeah, you get a custom subdomain. So that's interesting. Uh, so some things that I would do in this situation, <laughs> all black muscle men, uh, let's copy a, well, let me show you, oh, there's so many. This is a bad one to do. Okay, so let's see. Somebody said we can pull these all. Let's try pulling these all from the. So the, the cert route might be the best way to go. Let me actually make this bigger. We'll take advice from chat. So said curl dash I dash K 
HTTPS cert.sh and then the query of let's try it where did I screw up Oh, I see where I screwed up. Missed a Q, missed a Q. Let's see. That's a negative Ghost Rider. Okay. Let's just G edit. It's fine. Unsupported type Q. Oh, because I'm a friggin' idiot. You are correct. All right. Yep. Okay, so let's see if we can grep that out. How are we going to do this? Tumblr.com, see if that pulls lines. Oh, not G edit. Definitely cat. There we go. Uh, where is the first line? Field of one, two, three, four, five, maybe? Nope. Definitely not. It's just pu pulling down spaces. What are we missing? 2018. OK. We are close. We're still pulling spaces. No, my control A is something different, actually. I have a, a food bar that, but I can also take here. Let's see this. We'll try that. Otherwise, we're going the Excel route, which you guys will love. There you go. Coming through in the clutch. We can also uh, 
What is the sort to remove duplicates? Sort unique? That works. Take these. And I'm just going to get rid of all the wild cards that were in there. Okay, so Gia domains, and we can say something like this. Get rid of the double. Okay. So that narrows that list down a lot. <laughs> 66 dot media. Oh, do we have a 69? Did I delete a 69? Oh, I did. Sorry. Might be. Wouldn't want to do that. All right. So uh, there's a couple different methods that we can do. So, and it seems like we got some, some more experienced people in here, which is nice because I'm learning some stuff, but so let's say yeah sublister return way more domains or subdomains but users create their own subdomains which we don't want in this situation uh or else we'll be looking at all the uh i saw some pretty nasty <laughs> subdomains in there if you if you watch carefully uh, so we could say something like uh, for site in dollar sign cap these domains dot text say do curl uh, s for silent we'll just dev null this and then uh, grab the header Grab the response code. I'll just print out. The site and the new line. And Let's see if that works. Let's see if that's actually working. It is. Okay. So uh, a lot of these 403'd, but they're alive, right? So they're absolutely alive. We've got a 200 here, 301 at API. Um, looks like these origin ones are not alive. This I thought was alive, or it's a wild card alive. Okay, and then the other thing that we can do here is um, something like we could run it against this list. We could say like eyewitness against the list that we just did and see if it picks up any kind of screenshots other than, you know, what we had before. Yep. 
Okay, so this will take a minute. But this will go out and grab screenshots if it can connect to the website. So we'll get a nice little report. Yeah, this stays recorded. This will get uploaded to YouTube as well. What project are we looking for? I don't think I have a uh, bang project. Which last bit of code do you want? I'm sorry. Do you want the for loop or do you want the eyewitness? Yeah, it's got a bunch of errors connecting. Um, I don't know if anything, I don't know if we actually had a uh, legitimate connection to any of these. We probably should pull out the Alive host. What's new? October. Uh, those are all right now. VNC report. Okay, so it did work. I don't know why it aired out. So this is kind of what eyewitness looks like. You can see they have a Tumblr API here. Uh, we got a I am not a robot at extra. Oh, look, they're roboting us. So some of these sites are alive. Here's the analytics. This looks like it's its own blog though. Uh, obviously that's Tumblr. Nothing. Secure.tumblr. Okay, and a lot of request denies here. Embed services, platform, or not found. Uh, XML access denied here. Here, here, here as well. So we at least know those hosts are alive. There's another API and these ones do not resolve. So that's a quick way, even though if we had issues, um, you know, 65 seconds or whatever it took. And sorry, let me send you guys the eyewitness. Uh, oh, well, I'll just send you the one I have. So out of these, I mean, nothing's super interesting. Uh, we could go read the API. We can actually open this and just see if they've got documentation on the API is what I'm guessing. So, I mean, this is here for, I, I'm guessing developers. I don't know if this is gonna be super useful to us. I mean, it's like a Swagger doc, right? Um, at least tells us some of what's going on behind the scenes. So that's nice to have. Uh, let's see some of these that ask for, okay. You dream for Swagger Docs? Did I get all the cross? Fuck. 
All right. I don't know how I missed a crosswalk, but apparently, guys. All right. What resolve to this? It's blog off. Maybe this this is getting picked up and it's somebody's blog. I don't know. Let's take a look again. Extra dot tumblr. Same with global pop. All right. I won't focus this one too much. Check this one out. Secure seems like it's just HTTPS, but we'll see. We've got a lot of request denies here. Now, is it rate limit? Can somebody access this page other than me? Or is that a straight up deny? If anybody in chat can access embed.tumblr.com, denied, okay. Are you telling me that you don't want your mouse, Mr. Cat? Is that what you're saying? Do you want me to give a the mouse away, your mouse away? Because we can make that happen. So none of these are super interesting at the moment. Um, let's go out to, let's just go out to Tumblr. Let's just set Tumblr and scope for now. We could load the InScope file if we wanted to. I'm using my actual pen test machine right now, so I don't want to like, I guess I could load it. We could also just do regex, um, but this is fine. Got a robots.txt, move permanently, 301. There you go. So Google engine search box or search robot on some of these the Google bot, um, Yahoo. A lot of these are the same. So like you have to question what some of these are and you might have to be authenticated for a lot of this to log in and actually access. I, I always start with accessing the, um, the unauthenticated side first 
and then I, I start with authenticated. We can make an account. Yeah, there's nothing here right now. Um, yeah, they sent me here for a 404. That's interesting. So you can actually see a lot of this without having to um, having to be logged in. And I grabbed the wrong tumbler. There you go. That's a lot better. Oh, let's look at a repeater. Just to see it a little bit cleaner. It's all the same. Are we suspecting 5,900? Let's go back. If you guys want to look at that, we can. Origin. Let's take a look first, and then we can do a uh, scan of the host. Let's try. No. Okay, let's scan the host. Does Origin respond at all? What's up, stick in the mine? So all these... All of these um, 5900s we're seeing, oh, API.login, API.tumblr. Let's just pull this address down. Actually, it pulled it for us, and I'm sure this is low balance too, but let's see. Um, where's the eyewitness report? Let's go back. API resolved here. Let's just do a quick end map of this. Eighty and four four three. So I don't know how how accurate those fifty nine hundreds are. I would assume that's in the top top one thousand. Filtered. Filter doesn't mean closed. Actually, you're correct. You are right. It checks RDP and 5900. I didn't see... Um, do we see 3389s through here? No. All right. Let's go back into, let's crawl this, shall we? Correct, it doesn't mean open and doesn't mean closed. And while we're crawling this, um, since the, the kitty cat doesn't want his, uh, his mouse 
I'll open it up for another another giveaway. Let me pull this up. All right, I will open this for, do I have to reset it? Yeah, I'll reset it. I will open this up for two minutes for a giveaway. We'll give away the one mouse that was not given away. If you want a mouse, you cannot, <laughs> you cannot enter again. while we wait for this to, to go through. And actually, while we're doing this, 38 minutes is not gonna work. Let's see if we can up the resources. I put 100, I live dangerously. Let's see how we're doing. About one minute left. Actually might be getting rate limited here. Let's, uh, let's dump it back down to 10. Well, no errors came through. Fifteen seconds. It's actually quite a bit of you in here. Twelve. All right. Here goes nothing. Let's pick a winner. I raid. You have won. Please add me and shoot me over your address, name, and email, please. See, I'm looking for Let's see if this works. Three new friend requests. Oh, look at that. I didn't realize you guys were here. There you go. Yeah, send me over the info, please. My friend requests weren't showing up. All right. Back to reality. So I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to keep this going for maybe 15 more minutes. Um, but are you guys starting to understand? Are you guys starting to understand the methodology what we're looking for here? So I mean, it's important to know all the subdomains. Well, it's, first of all, it's important to know the scope that's going on, right? Um, and once we know scope, and this one was nice, and why I chose it was because it had the wild card as a scope. Um, so, you know, it's nice to, to be able to, um, look at the subdomains, go through it and see what we can find, see what's alive, even run eyewitness like we did to see, you know, get a picture view really quickly so we can visualize what's there and, you know, see if it's something of interest just off of, uh, looking at it. Um, but from here, realistically what we're going to do is we're going to start going out to these domains or these subdomains and we're going to start you know scanning these hosts looking for any sort of interesting areas we're going to start prodding parameters um, seeing what we can break 
So right now I just have a, a scan going and it's gonna take two hours and six minutes. Um, but we can go through here and you saw me just kind of clicking through just to generate some traffic into Burp Suite. Um, so that's an important thing as well because the, you know, the scan, the crawl doesn't always find everything as well. So, and yeah, that, um, this methodology again that I showed you guys, wherever it went, I mean, he, you guys mentioned mass scan. He also mentions mass scan. So you can also do that. If you're doing web pen testing, you don't have to use Kali or Linux. You can absolutely use Windows. I use Windows for a lot of web testing. I'm using Windows right now. Well, I'm using Windows kind of, but I'm using Kali here. Uh, but you saw me earlier, if you were here, using Windows for my for the entire stream. So um, it's entirely dependent on what you're comfortable with. Sometimes I have issues with Burp Suite in my Kali machine. Uh, so I just switch to Windows for some of it. There's some tools that are just easier to run in Kali or run on Linux than it is to run in uh, a Windows environment. So I'm actually gonna call, I'm gonna call it here on the, on this portion. I'm gonna go ahead and come back to, to reality. So we'll call it here and we'll we'll start opening up for uh, for Q&A. How about that? And from what I from my experience to answer that question as well is I do not dual boot. Um, I always use Kali on a VM. The only time that I put Kali in metal, and I have it right here, is for my pen test, like my Dropbox. Like this is one of my Dropboxes. I just use cheap little Dropboxes because Kali doesn't require a lot of system requirements, so it's super easy to ship out. Um, and they're super cheap. Like this laptop was 500 bucks. You could probably even go cheaper, but super easy. Uh, I definitely recommend VMs though. What's the best resource to get hands-on practice and learning as a beginner? Are you looking to get into network, web app? What, what direction are you trying to go right now? And then I can kind of point you into the right direction. Web app bug bounties. Um, so start with like the, the hacker one has the CTF, start there. Uh, in terms of books, the uh, the web application hackers handbook. Actually, if you do a if you do a bang books like that, there's some books in there. There's a recent book on bug bounty hunting that I've heard good reviews on. Uh, I've got that on the list. Um, so if you like reading, that's an option. If you like coursework, uh, certification wise, the eLearn Security has the web app uh, course that I thought's really good. They've got the advanced web app course, which is pretty good. Uh, Offsec has a course which I've heard mixed things about um is the g -WAP from sans is out there but that's like six or seven grand so i mean it, it, there's other like the the hacker one ctf is nice again because it's got resources if you um it's got some walkthroughs for it and it gets you into private bug bounties uh, which is kind of nice as well so you don't have to do public like the tumblr one i'm doing is public um, on top of that, Port Swigger, who makes Burp Suite, is uh, starting to release training material, which is actually really solid stuff. So keep that in mind as well. So, so pen testing Android and iOS. There is I would look into the OWASP pen test um, pen test guide for mobile. So they've got an OWASP guide for um, for web apps, but they also have one for mobile. So look into that. They should have a spreadsheet and a PDF doc for it that will point you in the right direction on methodology, tools, etc. Recommendation for network pen test beginner. 
Uh, so for me, I would recommend starting with something like uh, Hack the Box or Vulnhub if you're doing it on the cheap. Uh, a course like PTS, Penetration Testing Student from eLearn Security is really good to get started with. I would avoid CEH, Pen Test Plus, etc. OSCP is a good start, like a nice starting point. The PTP from eLearn Security, Pen Test, Penetration Testing Professional, is really, really up to date, in my opinion, and it's uh, relevant. It's actually real world kind of stuff. Um, I really like that kind of material. If you don't have that kind of money, then you know, just read up on blogs, watch videos, do the Zero to Hero course. Um, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, so if you guys are, you're asking about the Alive hosts, I saw those come through. I will send out the for loop that I ran after I grabbed all the um, all the stuff from Sublister or from cert.sh. So something like that will work for you. And you can modify that to make it better, um, but you could easily grep out the, you know, the response codes, organize it by response code, however you want to do it. I mean, if you're already this far on the CEH, don't, uh, don't be discredited by it. It's just not, it's not up to standards. And see you later. Uh, See you later, Burnt Toast. It's nice having you here, as always. Yeah, so let's... Uh Let's touch back on the CEH. So I got the CEH after I got my Linux Plus. So it was a while ago. Um, after I got the CEH and comparatively to my first starting job in pen testing was at least another year or so. Um, the CEH in no matter prepared me for anything in pen testing. It is very much a command memorization. Uh, they have labs. The videos are incredibly boring. Um, they are really like four hours of this guy just reading off a PowerPoint and walking you through labs, which sounds like me, and I promise it's not. It's worse. Uh, so I really, I really wasn't fond of it. The test was pretty bad. Um, and just when you come out of it, the knowledge was the knowledge was nothing. So, and then as an experience, when I was actually in interviews as a pen tester that, you know, most of the hiring managers just chuckled or laughed about it. It was nothing that got me anywhere with a hiring manager. And I could tell you as a experienced pen tester that dealing with people who just got their CEH still to this day, they do not know anything. And it's not like, I don't mean to harp on you if you got the CEH or anything. I'm just talking my experience and everything I've seen. So, I don't know anything about the CYSA. I don't know anything about the ECSA at all. Um, and another thing that drove me nuts with the CEH was I got audited because I finished the test so fast. So they have a, like the test is four hours and if you finish the test within so, so many minutes and score greater than a 90%, you get automatically audited, which means that uh, they ask you all kinds of questions about your background. And then they also ask you, um, or you may have to take like a, a second test, which is like 30 minute or 30 questions or something like that. They're that supposed to be harder. Um, but I ended up scoring like a 90.45 or something crazy. Like if I would have just missed one more question, I wouldn't have got audited. It was an annoying process to go through. Um, but it, you know, I, they didn't end up taking it any farther because they were like, who did you do training through? And I did training through them. So, um, if you're, if you know all the answers, try to miss a few, I guess, or don't, 
don't go through uh don't go too fast i i guess is my other advice on that test Yeah, the train material did have misspellings. Uh, yeah, so before doing Zero to Hero, it helps to know networking. It helps to know a tiny bit of Linux, though we cover Linux and we cover Python. So my three big, big things that I harp on, I say you should know Linux, Python, and you should know networking. None of those you have to be an expert at. None of those you have to be great by any means but um it helps with zero to hero it definitely helps with any kind of pen testing so definitely things to you know to think about but networking like just knowing common protocols like ipv4 ipv6 dns arp dhcp uh how to subnet you know what subnets look like what a subnet mask is uh what class a class b class c what a pipa addresses look like if some of the stuff that I'm mentioning to you sounds like a foreign language, then it, you probably need a little bit more knowledge in the uh, in the field of networking. So, how much longer am I going to be live streaming? Probably maybe thirty minutes. I usually so I usually go when the chat starts to die out. We've lost maybe 15 since the AMA started, and that's kind of typical. Like, it just starts to wind down. People ask their questions. They peace out. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. Like, I'll be here in, until we start fading away and the questions start slowing down. So it could be anywhere from 15 minutes to another hour. Subnetting sucks, asshole. I could teach you how to subnet and make it seem easy, I think. I think. Do you guys want to learn some subnetting? We could totally do that. We'll do a subnet lesson. Are there any good introductory resources for noobs? Just hack the box. Watch, watch YouTube videos. Watch anything that you can get your hands on, honestly. All right, we'll do a quick, we'll do a TCM's five minute subnet lesson. Let's see if we can do this in five minutes. I got to do this off memory. Um, so let's see. Eight, uh, let's leave gaps in here. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20. Ah, this will make sense, I promise. Okay, so these are your subnets. You can think of these as like like the common right here is a WAC 24, right? You'll see it written out like slash 20, whoa. Uh, you'll see it written out, if I can do this, slash 24, something like that. So just imagine all these have a slash in front of them. Okay, so we have a couple things here. Uh, we start, I always start with 192, 192 here, or We'll start on the other side. We'll start one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Yeah, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, um, sixty-four, and then one twenty-eight. Sorry, one twenty-eight here, and then we start adding up. So 128 plus 64 is 192 is where I was getting that number from. Then 224, 240, 248, 252, 254, 255. All right. Here we go. This is this is going to be easy. Post mask. If 
your number, your cider falls in line with this column, guess what? Your last address ends in this number, 255. So if we have, okay, here, here's another thing to point out too. Let's delete this. This column is 255.0.0.0. Or it ends, actually, this is 0 .0 .0 .0. 0.0.0.0. It's a starting point. This one is 255.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. This one is 255. And this one is 255. So meaning that we start out at all zeros here. Before we get to one, we start at all zeros. We end on 32 at all two five fives. So this would be this last column here. This whole row is two five five two five five two five five dot x. If it is a slash 25 network, it's a 128. Slash 26, it's a 192. Slash 27, 224. The most common one you see is a slash 24. That's home networks. That's everything else. So you have 255.255.x, which is 255.0. So you can think of the the these as x, actually, would be even a better way of thinking about it. And this last one's an x. And then the first one here would be an x. So if you had a slash or a WAC 5 network, you come down. It would be 248.0.0.0. That's how you find the mask. The mask is super simple. Now the host, super simple as well. Starting at 32 and moving up, it doubles. That's really it. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Can we take a guess at what 24 is? It's 256. 512. And if you want to get fancy, you could just say equals this times two. And then you could do your whole drag and drop across the board. So now the special number of subnetting is you have to subtract two. You have a broadcast address and a, a host address, right? Or whatever it's called, the other one. So in a situation where your common network is 24, slash 24, which we'll put this down here, say slash 24, oops. You'll have a mask of 255.255.255.0. Again, because we're filling in the X with this number. And then you're going to have um, a number of hosts be 256. But you have to actually subtract two from that because you have a broadcast address, which is typically um, 255. And then you have a uh, you have a host ID or network ID, which is typically dot one or dot dot zero. So um, another way to look at this, let's say <laughs> let's say we have a network and there's class A, class B, and class C. We'll take the common home network here. The common home network is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. The subnet mask of a slash 24 network is 255, 255.0. That means that we have 256 potential IP addresses because we have the host ID or the network ID, which would be 192.168.1.0, the broadcast IP of 192.168.1.255. So between 1 and 254, you have 254 possible IP addresses in this range. So this becomes more interesting when you're trying to narrow it down and say, hey, I only want six hosts. Or if you're doing a test, it might say, uh, you know, how many hosts can you fit in a, a WAC 29 network? Or you have a network and you have six hosts. 
what size network are you going to use? Or they might trick you and they say you have a, a network and you have eight hosts. What size network are you going to use? Well, you're going to use a, a WAC 28 because you can't have eight hosts in a WAC 29. You really have to bump up to a 28 because of the minus two rule. So this is a quick chart that you honestly can write down in less than five minutes. So this, um, this, how I write this out when I do tests is I leave a little bit of gap in between. I write one through eight, just like I write it here. Then I write these two. I start with 128 and I subtract down and, or divide by two. And then I add these two numbers together to get the next. And then I add these three numbers to get the next. So you just add the next one on to the list and it keeps adding to this number here and that builds across. This is consistent all the way up and down here, um, but the only thing that changes are the host, and never have I seen before where they ask you to determine a host past like slash 17. So if you can memorize this kind of stuff, um, I they would be cruel and unusual to go down to like one, two, three, um, et cetera. So. Right. Yeah. Somebody, somebody's mentioning the bits on this as well. Like these are all, uh, these are all ones and zeros is another way to look at it too. So, I mean, you do 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2. If you have 255, like say your subnet mask is a slash 24, you would have all ones across the board because these add up to 255. Right, but if you had two five four, okay, this would become a zero, or two five two, this would become a zero. Same thing. So these are on switches versus off switches, and that's how we get these numbers of the mask here when it breaks down to the bits of ones and zeros. And a little longer than five minutes, but that is my that is my subnetting lesson of the day. But I never see, I never see that method taught anywhere. Honestly, I never see that method. And that's the easiest method, little chart that you could write down in just seconds. And I never see it done. So I don't know why. I, I saw that from a guy or some, a, a Cisco guy taught me that and it was sweet, but I've never seen it done before or after. I looked up that chart to try to find that chart online and I couldn't find it. Watch the video, copy the chart, man. Work a little hard in your life. The claw, I'm on claw number two now. Absolutely not keto because I destroyed some pie earlier. So this is just icing on the cake, I guess. or anti-icing. Yeah, it's just the, it, it's something that won't pack on too many pounds compared to the white Russians that I like to drink, which are all calories. There's no law when you're drinking the claw, boys. Uh, thanks, man. I'll catch you later. What is a paralyzer? White Russians are... I can never give up the white Russian. 
That's like one of the hardest parts of keto is, uh, so you learn to like whiskey, you learn to like, I guess, vodka, uh, things that have no calories on keto, but I tried to mix um, or make my own white Russians and it, it turns out being like heavy cream, coffee, and vodka, which is not, it's really not the same. The Kahlua really makes it. Um, or you do like coffee and Jameson or something, you know, to try to still get that coffee-ish flavor. Bye, Coffee Nomad. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Oh, I love fruity drinks, by the way. Fruity drinks. I will go to uh, I will go to sporting events, and these are the only place that I really find it. Or like New Orleans has it, or um, like the whatever tourist trap places kind of have it. But they have uh, these daiquiris, and the daiquiris like they're frozen and they come in different flavors, and they dispense them. And I will get them to just like. Uh, to just mix all the flavors in a row. That's my favorite shit is just mix all the flavors in a row. I love it. And if you've ever been to New Orleans, a hand grenade will kick you on your ass. Diet root beer is delicious. Vodka, rum, Coke, milk, glue on ice. Oh, um, so vodka, Coke, milk, and Kahlua is also called a Colorado Bulldog, which, yeah, it has to be mixed properly or it is going to curdle. Talking drinks with TCM. All right, we'll call, we'll call what? A 10 minute warning? We'll see how it goes. We'll call 10 minute warning. I need to make like a secondary Twitch slash YouTube account where I do nothing but just bullshit and dick around. Um, so I can play Overwatch video games, do whatever the hell I want in my other time where I'm not actually doing anything. Berkeley insights and ruling out false positives. Um, so for me with false positives, when I'm doing pen tests, uh, especially is, you know, I'll run the active scan and then I'll go through and try to verify the results of what they're saying. Uh, you get a lot of false positives, I think with injection. And if you can't duplicate, what, what I noticed too is typically they'll give you a response or two responses and you can compare the responses. And a lot of times they'll have like a, um, like a 500 or a 404 will be the second response and they'll be like, oh, something changed. There must be injection here. Uh, so you just kind of have to like be able to spot those or be able to verify what you're seeing 
because Burp Suite's really, especially when you start adding on the the extender apps, they can really get um, really throw a lot of errors that just aren't true. So I do my best to go in there and verify and then right click them and mark them as false positive if I have to. What will the username be? Probably not the cyber anything. We used to do live, live hack alongs back in the day. There's only so much we can do. What's my favorite vulnerability? Uh, the one I like to see the most on an assessment's Eternal Blue. I think that that vulnerability is um, just so easy peasy. I mean, you just, you literally run a script, you get a shell. It can't get, uh, it can't get really much better than that. That is a gimme vol, but that's, that's why it's a favorite. Yeah, and it's still littered all over. I swear to you, I see it in, I would say at least 30% of assessments still. You find one machine at least on a network with it. Do you have any resources for AWS pen testing? I do not. But if anybody in chat has resources they'd like to share, I am open to hearing about them. What do you ask in interviews about um, about MSO8? And why why do you ask about MSO8? Why do you ask hacker trivia? I, I like to hear other people who do interviews and and. Uh, understand why they do what they do. Hey, thanks, Hacks to Learn. Appreciate it, man. If you've done a certain certification, you surely know it well, intimately. <laughs> I I agree, sick in the mind. I agree. I don't think I've ever seen MS08 uh, on any pen test. And no, I haven't finished the Hacker 101 CTF. I got a couple different private invites, but that's about it. Are people are people coming over and it's not finding that when they're doing a testing portion of an interview? Cause that's sketch. I'm a I'm a big fan of the uh, technical 
hands-on portion of interviews. I think that they are super important. Super important. If I if I had my way, I would probably do an internal pen test, um, unless you're like talking junior level resource. But I would I would form format it in a uh, in an internal. The I've been through several types of those, and they're either always web app based, or they are external based. And they are usually really terrible. That sounds terrible. The repeater on burp is like the only legitimate question out of any of those. Also, like I, when I interview people, I completely avoid those types of questions. Um, I, I interview based on methodology. So I'll like, I'll start you off with a pen test type question. Say like, Hey, you're given a pen test. You're given the scope, blah, blah, blah. What's your first step? And then like I, I start to guide the questions along and then eventually they get in um, and it covers like all the variety, you know, external testing, um, password spraying, credential stuffing, SQL injection. There's a lot of things. I just want to hear how they work mentally and how they can talk me through something more than what does this switch do on Nmap? Like that's not uh, that's not what I'm after. But if you can walk me through a good methodology, that's really solid. And then the practical portion is is important as well. I'm always curious to hear how other people do it. My first pen test job was all trivia, all trivia, man. But my boss, my boss was great. During the interview, he was a straight shooter. If you got it wrong, he told you right then and there you got it wrong, told you why it was wrong. Um, so I was taking notes the whole time and then uh, immediately when we were done, he, he told me that he wanted a second interview and I, good thing I took notes because a lot of those questions came up again. So yeah, pen test has too many commands and techniques for me to expect anybody to know them by heart. Uh, if you say like, I, I broad generalizations are fine. Like if there was an internal pen test question and you said something about token impersonation with incognito, A plus. I don't care about the commands specifically. I just care that you actually know the methodology and some of the tools that'll get you there. Um, as long as you sound com comfortable and confident with that methodology, then I'm way more than happy to believe that you know how to use the tool. I've had coding questions come up on pen test interviews as well. I've had, um, God, who was it? Was it FireEye? FireEye uh, asked like some random logic on one and then they asked you to fix uh, a broken code on another. So that was interesting. Uh, my first program, a hacker one was private, so I can't talk about it. Unfortunately. I don't know if this is an accurate statement, but I feel like uh, like Chatterbait, Tubebait, Pornhub, all the porn sites, I feel like they're less touched. I could be completely wrong, but I feel like they're less touched. So 
Maybe there's some uh, some money hiding around over there. Yeah, Pornhub, uh, Pornhub, there's a good write-up actually on about Pornhub paid $10,000 uh, for a bounty. Yeah, 20K for deserialization. There's, there's really good Pornhub write-ups out there, honestly. <laughs> Any recommendations breaking out of DOD? Um... I mean, honestly, there's there's not a lot. I mean, the, the life is different outside of DOD. Like the work can be a lot faster. Uh, but I don't think there's like anything specific that you would need. Just uh, just try to meet the job requirements and apply, honestly. Uh, do, 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 do. Corey, you're in the Discord. Are these serious questions, Kat? Uh, so I think uh, I think Goddess there was trying to do a Mother Russia. You don't pen test website. Website pen test you. If we're talking website pen testing, then. I would say go back through this entire series. Um, look at the OWASP testing guide. Honestly, I'm gonna type it out for you. OWASP testing guide. Version four has the PDF. I don't know if version five has the PDF for it. Look at the PDF for version four, follow the PDF through the checklist and you will be Gucci gang, my friend. All right, call on the four minute warning, four minute warning. I got videos to upload. I got to get these uh, dresses corralled. Am I excited for the upcoming Pokemon game? I don't really play the Pokemon games, honestly. I'm just a fan of, I'm a fan of Snorlax over there. That's about it. What's up, demo darts? Not a whole lot, man. OTG v4, that looks like it would be it. There's also an Excel document that goes with it. So type in OWASP testing guide v4 GitHub and download the Excel doc that goes with it as a checklist. That checklist is your friend. And that'll teach you how to pen test a website. Exactly. GitHub is an amazing resource. Version five is out there. I don't know if they have a PDF guide for version five yet. We're not done with the uh, pen test for noob series. We are slowing it down to once every other week. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to compete with Ipsec. That's not the that's not the point here. So 
Like if if you're trying to compete, then you're doing the boxes, you're doing the the write ups when they release. Uh, this is more of an educational aspect of like realistic pen testing. So I try to pick out boxes that um, can at least come across realistic or teach something on the pen test site that's actually useful. Uh, so some of the boxes are just like, and that's why it's hard to get past uh, certain points of hack the box because it just becomes capture the flag based and it doesn't really feel realistic anymore. Um, so I don't know how much longer this series is going to go on, but there's still a few boxes that there are valuable lessons with. Yeah, demo. We're we're at the tail end of uh, of everything now. We we did do some bug bounty hunting earlier, uh, some pen test lessons and stuff. But if you want to check out the channel, you're more than welcome to check out the channel or check out the YouTube channel as well. Uh, if not, we'll be back on Wednesday of next week. But there's a there's quite a bit of content on the network pen test side and the web app side on the YouTube channel. Uh, or you can look at some of the VODs that are here as well. Uh, thank you, gamer. I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Uh, any vids on social engineering, not just hacking, but social psychology side? Uh, that's a good question. I don't. So I know the like the Jason Street talk at DEF CON. Um, there's also a talk at Wild West Hacking Fest that has been going around for some time. Uh, in terms of like physical pen testing on the social engineering side, I don't know um, who's the uh, who's the one guy that wrote the book. He's got some content on YouTube, but I'm I'm honestly not sure on the social engineering. There are um, God the one. There's a couple. There's one that was written by like a former FBI guy, and, and it might be the same one that I'm thinking about. But there's also the one. So the former FBI one is uh, a lot of ways to like read tells. Uh, the other one is like the whole lie to me series was based off this study and these books, uh, things like that. So those might be worth checking out. But I couldn't couldn't recall these names off the top of my head. What's up? I can't say your name. Care. I'll call you Cares. Cares. Um, do I normally stream this slot? I stream Wednesdays at eight, and I've been streaming daily at noon for an hour, noon Eastern. Ah, uh, how do we block this user? The bots, man. The bots. Jason Street made a 3D scan of you. That's kind of epic, actually. I think the uh, the cat might be a, a little bit of a troll. That's all right, guys. TCM, thanks a lot for it. Uh, thanks, Murph. I'm glad you enjoy that. Appreciate it. How did you get tickets to the last DerbyCon is my question. I sat there and tried to purchase them repeatedly and could never get in. So I felt sad. I didn't try to buy a ticket. You were on the list. You're super important. Is this what you're telling me? Are you VIP, my friend? Ah, oh, I see. 
I applied as like a last heave of desperation. I applied for a talk there, but and I applied non-technical on the talk and it didn't get picked up. So I got picked up for that talk at Wild West, which is cool. I've never been to Wild West before, so I'm excited. But I really did want to go to Derby because I've never been to a Derby Con before. What OS do I use when I pen test? I use Kali Linux. Six Derby Cons. Yeah, I'm never going to a Derby Con. I, I understand that sick in the mind. I'm aware of the situation at hand. It's like a car thing? No. DerbyCon's a cybersecurity conference. Well, it was a cybersecurity conference that was in Kentucky. Hence Derby, because the Kentucky Derby, Derby Con. Uh, Cali over Parrot is just preference, honestly. It's not really uh, anything against Parrot. And I honestly, I think I want to do either Parrot video or Parrot, maybe tomorrow we'll just do a Parrot stream, just play around with it. Uh, but honestly, it's it's nothing that I have against it. I've heard pros and cons to both sides, but Cali is just so familiar to me that um, I just I just enjoy using it. No, I'm not messing with Black Arch. Come on, man. I'm not I'm not that nerdy. Do I know how to do lock picking? Sure. Do I, am I good at it? No. I don't even know where my locks went. I've got a lock here. I had a, I had the clear one here the other day. I don't know where it went. It's not super important. There's this, um, this company that I'm doing work for right now is 1099 stuff. And they're running commando on a lot of their machines now, which is interesting. So I'm most definitely a Cali guy. I hate I hate network testing with Windows. I do enjoy testing web apps with Windows a lot of the time. But yes, it it's there's some roundabout methods you have to take. Mobax's term? I've never heard of that. But I will check it out. I'm always into the next tool. We'll Google as we speak. Ah, MOBA X term. Got it. X server and tabbed SSH client for Windows. That's cool. Actually looks nice. See, I don't know these things, guys. Yeah. 
Is my primary OS Windows? Absolutely. Come on now. Because nobody wants to deal with running wine to play a fucking video game. That's the main reason. You be disappointed all you want. Yep. Video games suck dick on Linux in 2019. Realest statement ever said in this chat. Hands down. What's up, Punchimari? So you guys are too smart. I'm not that smart. I'm a dumb user. Hey, thank you, Faye T. I appreciate that. Thank you for the sub. You are a scholar and a gentleman or a gentlewoman. Your Discord bot, are you about to spam us? All right, no DDoS tonight, that's good. How does an ethical hacker get hired for a job like this? Uh, you just have to have the knowledge and apply, honestly. Like, you gotta have the certifications and the knowledge to be successful. Are you still, so I haven't done any Linux based graphics. Are you still having to blacklist drivers, like blacklist Nouveau and stuff like that? Is that still a thing? Been a couple of years since I've had to do that stuff. Yeah, nice. Well, that's just silly. Yep. Do I do bug bounty through hacker one? Uh, occasionally I poke around there. I'm more on Synac than anything else. I got you, uh, Mr. M. Alex, 
Look at this. Look at this. YouTube. Go to YouTube. Find things. Learn things. So I saw and I lost it. I had to restart my computer today. Uh, I had a good FAQ open from another streamer who like listed out in a nice GitHub format all their FAQ. And I really just need a nice, nice command for FAQ when people ask these kind of questions. But it's partly my fault because I don't have a good FAQ up. What are, okay, I saw something about three ports you shouldn't be turned on. Are we talking internal, external? Because RDP on the external would be, why do you have that on? Um, Telnet's obviously ClearNet. Anything that's ClearNet, like, I pen tested an internal not that long ago where the client was still using um, IMAP, but like IMAP 143. And you're just like, why are you doing that? Yeah, 445. I understand the need for file shares, but if you didn't have a file share, you make our life a lot more difficult. Honestly. Forty two is the answer to everything. I've been in environments where there's no SMB and that is just, it's a nightmare, man. Oh yeah, never expose 445 to the uh, external side is an accurate statement. I don't think there's anything, uh, I don't know if you ever become an expert in this field. Honestly. Uh, this will be the last one I answer because I do have shit to do still. Um, so imposter syndrome, you, you have to tell yourself that you belong. Like that's, that's the big key here is that, um, when you, when you are in a job and you're worried about, you know, succeeding in the job, you have to first tell yourself that. You were picked up for that job. You made it into this field because you were meant to be there. If you weren't meant to be there, you wouldn't be there. Uh, we have a shortage in this field, and there are a lot of people that still can't find a job, mainly because they are just not qualified to work in the field. Um, and because of that, if you land a job, say as a pen tester, and you uh, are among a group of very few people that actually make it into the field, which is good, uh, the other thing is you have to one, you have to one stay humble and to be very aware that people will be uh, better than you, smarter than you, faster than you. They'll be younger than you. Uh, there any kind of situation where you know you, you see these people and you're like, man, I can't keep up. You don't worry about those people. Try to learn from those people. Try to get better from those people. The imposter syndrome doesn't fully go away, I don't think, at least not in my experience, but it fades over time. It's like anything that you start, you start in the beginning, you're not as good, but by the time you get better and better, you know, it just starts to go away. Um, so I, I don't think it's something that you should worry about. You should put it on the back burner because 
if you make it as far as uh, as this, it's it's something that you you belong. So. Yep, it's all normal. Somebody said it goes away after two years. I don't know if it ever goes away. You always see somebody better, faster, anything. And, you know, you just have to be able to, to cope with that. These are all facts. Important to doubt yourself, double check, etc. Uh, I said last question, but I'll answer this very shortly. Uh, you are not in the field to remediate. You're in the field to offer advice. You let them do the remediation. It's the standard way of doing it. You might find a boss at a small shop that wants to do all the work, A, B, C, and D for everybody, uh, but that's not typical. So, all right, guys. I am out. So I will probably be on. I don't see why not tomorrow. I may have a meeting tomorrow at noon. I forget what time I got a meeting. But uh, I will definitely be back. Let's see. Let's definitely catch it on either Discord or catch it on Twitter. I'll announce what I'm going to be back. But I have a meeting at... Oh, just 10? That's not bad. I had a lot of meetings today. Let me check the other calendar. I have no meeting tomorrow. So good. Just 10 o'clock. We'll be back at noon. So I'll see you guys all at noon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all the subs. Thanks for the donations. Thanks. I saw new Patreons come through as well. So thank you, everybody. Um, I will see you guys in the morrow. Peace out.